Willie, we're here in one of the original barns of Clausotin, of course. Uh, you can see plaques of Alexander Banquet, Fat Tour and Florida Pearl. Some famous memories and some famous horses all through the years, particularly from the early days. Yes, they're, you know, it, the Red Barn is our best barn. And of course, one horse I don't want to forget is Wither of Witch, uh, who was instrumental to in lifting us up another gear, I think, uh, winning the bumper in Cheltenham. Uh, it's been a very lucky barn for us. Indeed, and of course you rode him yourself. You're near the end of your riding career at that stage, but you went out and rode him in the bumper. That must have been a big thrill for you. It, it was a huge thrill. Um, didn't realise how much pressure I was under until I heard Ted Walsh on the television the morning of the race saying, this is the Irish banker. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, ah, oh. um, it was a huge pressure. But I'd ridden, you know yourself, Frank, Fran, when you're in a big race, you ride it a thousand times for every eventuality. And... Um, even getting left at the start, which he did. He shied at the <laughs> tapes. And, um, you know, I knew if that happened, what I was going to do. And it worked out. He was just a galloping machine. He was a tremendous horse. Of course, he was your second challenge winner. I think he won a tourist attraction. was your first year before. And that was that, that's very right. special. Yes, yeah, tourist attraction, uh, Mark Dwyer. Uh, won at 25 to 1 or something the previous year. But the difference with Wither Witch was that we had bought him, broke him, rode him and it was sort of in-house. And I think a lot of people stood up and said, well, you know, uh, they're able to, in close up and they're able to buy them at the sales and prepare them for Cheltenham and win. And uh, that was key, I think, to the next part of the close up story. Stepping up, up a level and uh, yeah. just talking about Florida Pearl, he was some horse for you to get you going at the start, but I, I'm sure all the races that he won to win the King George at, Kempton that year with Adrian McGuire on must have been huge yeah, too. Yeah, it was. It was a fantastic win for Florida Pearl. Archie O'Leary, Vi and Archie O'Leary owned them. They were, I, I think Florida Pearl probably catapulted us up into another level. Uh, winning the King George was way bigger than I had thought at the time. It was amazing. It was like winning the Grand National, the, you know, winning the feature race on Stevens Day, Boxing Day, just catapulted us up into a different level. I think a lot of Around the world, you know, we friends that I hadn't heard of or from for years, um, sending messages. Uh, I don't know if we had phones at the time, texts <laughs> and <laughs> things like that. But um, it was, uh, yeah, I was amazed with the reaction that we got for, for it. Indeed, and it wasn't an orthodox, orthodox route to the King George, of course. He won the Cheltenham bumper. You never ran him over hurls. He went straight chasing. That's right, yeah. He was every inch a chaser. He loved jumping. And um, it certainly wasn't an orthodox day either. I think we had about three jockeys booked for him, but with all the cancellations in England that day, Adrian Maguire, I think, uh, drove. I think this was about to be third meeting to drive to that morning or something. They, they just kept getting cancelled, and he kept getting down to the south of England. And next thing, he became free. Uh, we got him on the day and um, proved uh, decisive, I think. Of course, not long after Florida Pearl, Hedgehunter came in the scene and I remember him falling at the second last or last in his first Grand National. That's right. Uh, David Casey, I think, rode him that day. He ran, he jumped terrific. He was such a well-named horse, Hedgehunter. I mean, just the way he jumped, it was a fantastic first spin around Aintree. And then we thought, wow, if we could just adjust a few things the following year, uh, we had a real entry horse on our hands and as it turned out it it came to be indeed it did and he went i remember going around with ruby in that year when he won the grand national in 2005 he went around the bridle basically all the way he did and uh, loved it um he he was just spot on we, which is funny to look at him in the parade ring you'd think he'd want three months of grass but until he looked like that he he wasn't the hedge hunter we knew he he was a very lean horse that he got, he got very upset in the preliminaries. He always was in a white sweat. But it seems to be what suited him when he got very fit like that. He could just gallop forever. He loved jumping and gallop forever. Um, tremendous thrill to win the Grand National. Indeed, and in some famous colours too, Trevor Hemmings, of course, great history with the Grand National. And to have a winner for him must have been special as well in that race. His Canadian, well, his Irish owner who lived in Canada, uh, asked me one day to sell the horse that he couldn't get over to see him and this that and the other and um, 
Trevor Hemmings then was always looking for a Grand National horse, so it suited. Uh, I thought he could have the potential and it worked out. Indeed, it did. No, a great day. And speaking of great days, of course, Hurricane Fly, one of the most special hurlers that we've seen in generations. Just talk of who is better, Hurricane Fly or Easterbrack. We'll never know that, but to win two champion hurls with that break in between must have been special this second time. He, he was a brilliant horse. Who knows whether he was better than Isbrack or not, but Isbrack did win three, and that's, <laughs> that's that. Our fellow, um, he had a break in between already. He was third one year. But he, he missed his novice year in Cheltenham, and he was fantastic around Leprestown. He was so brave. Ruby used to really love riding him, and, and especially if he got into a battle with the horse down to the last hurdle, Hurricane Fly would come off the ground anywhere, just, and he would... He'd make other horses make mistakes. He would just stand so far back. And he wasn't a big horse, but he had huge scope. When he took off, he could reach so far to get to a hurdle. Uh, and that's where a lot of his quality was. He used to just make ground through race, didn't he? And he never fully extended in race. But as you said, when Ruby needed him, he was there to take yeah, advantage he, of that. He had, he had huge speed as well. Well, you move on, of course, to Annie Power, great mare for the stable. Disaster nearly, well, as these things go, when she fell at the last in the mayor's hurl. But to go back a year later and win the champion hurl must have been giving you great satisfaction. I think it gave everyone uh, huge satisfaction, especially Susanna and Rich, Richie, who own the mayor, and, you know, our, arguably our best clients. And um, it, it, it was tremendous. Ruby really enjoyed it. Everyone enjoyed it. It was just unbelievable after what happened the previous year. Indeed, and of course she beat my ten to yours in that champion hurl and she went down to entry for what ended up being her last start and beat him by 16 or 17 lengths in the entry hurl. Yes, I mean, she was a mare that had huge ability and uh, we bought her to go chasing. We never, because she was such a good hurdler, we, we never went chasing with her. But um, anyhow, she's a, a brood mare now and... Um, throwing some nice folds. We move on to Quivega, of course, one of the great mares, Willie. She won six times at Cheltenham for you. Not sure she ever got the, quite got the credit she deserved, but some achievement to do that year after year. Yes, Quivega had an injury after the first year in Cheltenham, and I really cut down her racing. I just thought this mare is good enough to go back to Cheltenham next year and maybe win the mare's hurdle again. And she did it. And then I thought, let's just stick to that plan, go to Cheltenham and Punchestown. I never dreamt. I was hoping she might win a second one, and maybe then I said maybe she'll win a third <laughs> one. And we never dreamt she'd keep going. But when, it, when something works, I, I tend to stay with that plan. And um, it's extraordinary that she went back six times because when she got injured, uh, and I put this, you know, her, the credit to a lot of her victory down to Ned going um, at the time. And he told me what to do with her, how to rehabilitate her uh, hind leg injury. And we just stuck to that plan and um, it worked. So, uh, you know, no, no horse had ever won six times there and um, a huge achievement on our part. Indeed it was. And they uh, talk about the game coming full circle. You had a winner with one of our progeny last year in Tremor and you've got another one in training at the minute. It's uh, great the way these things come back around. It is. I, mean, I have a walk in the park out of Cravega, who looks uh, a nice type. He's only three, but um, he's a big horse. He's a horse that we could be talking about here, hopefully in a couple of years' time. Excellent. Listen, some great memories. Thank you.